we live in a world when we can think about reaching a destination instead of thinking equally about how we're going to get there. In this light, what does the Camino de Santiago really mean for us? The Pilgrimage is a 1987 book written by the Brazilian writer Paulo Coelho. It's a recollection of Coelho's experiences of walking the Camino de Santiago and trying to find his sword, which represents um, his initiation and his acceptance into a religious order. But importantly, the pilgrimage is not a guide to the Camino itself. We don't get much information about where to eat or where to sleep or what to see as we're going along. Rather, it's part adventure story and part a guide to self-discovery. So here's my selection of 10 things that I think that we can learn from the pilgrimage about life and about the Camino de Santiago itself. Let's get started. Strange road to Santiago. There are several places in the pilgrimage book where the author Paulo Coelho describes the Camino de Santiago as strange. Now, I'm intrigued by the use of this word because um, what does he mean? Um, I don't think he necessarily means that the Camino de Santiago is um, difficult to understand or that it's hard uh, to appreciate necessarily. I think what he means is that the Camino is somewhat unusual, especially at the beginning, and it might even be a little surprising. Uh, we never quite know what it is that we're going to face or encounter. One thing's for sure, I think Coelho means that the Camino is something that is for everyone. Um, you don't have to be a special person or have um, particular qualifications to take off on a Camino, on a pilgrimage. Um, but what you do need, uh, for sure, is an open mind. And in particular, um, a sense that you are um, open uh, to learning something new about yourself, something rather perhaps unexpected, uh, perhaps even something that's strange. Adventure of traveling toward the unknown. As Paulo Coelho starts off on his Camino de Santiago, he's unsure of what lies ahead. But one thing he can be certain about is that it's going to involve risks. He's going to be involved in moving outside of his immediate comfort zone and he's likely to encounter things that uh, he can't really foresee and indeed the Camino is an adventure. If he's right then what about people who set off on the Camino de Santiago and I don't mean to be judgmental here but people who set off with the idea that they need to cover a certain distance in a certain day, that they have pre-booked their accommodation ahead so they know exactly where they're going, they have a destination in mind. They've probably planned the meals that they're going to eat, um, the places they're going to stay, uh, the places they're going to visit. And so all of those things, as good as they are, they reduce uncertainty, but at the same time, they also reduce, don't they? The spirit of adventure that goes along with a Camino. When you travel, you experience, in a very practical way, the act of rebirth. The act of rebirth, what does Coelho mean? Well, I think he's referring to our experiences and the Camino de Santiago is something that you really do have to experience for yourself. Um, it's unique and it's a personal experience uh, that you have to go through. Now part of that involves uh, becoming uh, more conscious and aware of the way that you think and the way that you feel and becoming in particular more conscious and aware of your surroundings, um, what you can see, what you can sense, um, what you can um, be a part of. Um, it's a bit like that idea of being present in the moment. Um, and it's only something that you can develop uh, over time and with practice. So, um, the act of rebirth 
it's a kind of renewal. It's a kind of re-looking at what we're familiar with uh, to see things in a new and different way. But Coelho also has a word of caution relating to rebirth. It's that we have to be careful of our emotions and that we don't become overwhelmed by what we sense in a new and different way. Even if I were not able to find my sword, the pilgrimage along the road to Santiago was going to help me find myself. Finding ourselves is going to involve growth and it's manifested in a moving forward. Not necessarily in reaching a destination, but in something that can be seen as an internal process. Something that is unique to ourselves. Something that in the end will be uniquely transformational. It's a good idea always to do something relaxing prior to making an important decision in your life. You've got to be in the right frame of mind. And haste is the enemy of contemplation and wonder. We've got to find a way of slowing down. And in an exercise called the speed exercise, Coelho suggests, as I'm doing right now, is to walk for 20 minutes a day, but to do so at half pace. The idea here is that as you're walking along, you have time and an opportunity indeed uh, to just look around, uh, pay attention to the things that are in front of you, the things that are above you, the things that are alongside, the people that are around. And this might give you an opportunity to see things in a different light. In the life on the road to Santiago, certain things happen that are beyond our control. Indeed, knowing when, where, and how to act are really important elements in a process of self-discovery. Now for Coelho, wisdom is only wisdom and it's only useful if it helps us to overcome or to solve a particular situation. So that leads to the question about what happens when people do things, they act inappropriately not necessarily doing something that aids or helps them uh, overcome a particular situation or a particular set of circumstances. Well, I suppose if we're kind, uh, we could say that a person like that, a person acting like that, is acting unwisely. But I think uh, the real critique here, the point, the learning point for us to take away is that if we don't feel as if wisdom can be applied in a particular situation that we're in, then the best thing to do, as the road to Santiago might teach us, is to just move on and leave it alone. Teaching is only demonstrating that it is possible. Learning is making it possible for yourself. Learning is a process. And as an educator, um, I've been trying to teach for many, many years and it's taken a long time for me to get to the point where I understand what Coelho means. So learning as a process is like something that involves an inner conquest. Sometimes we need to overcome barriers in our own thinking uh, before we can learn something. That might mean unlearning certain things. That might also mean making space for new ways of thinking and new ways of understanding. It's only when we have the openness that these kinds of things are possible and a willingness uh, to see things in a new and different way, a point that is emphasised again um, in this key moment. The only way to make the right decision is to know what the wrong decision is. At first sight, this is a rather odd thing to say and write, but if you think about it, um, really uh, our decision making could involve if we were to think of things in a certain way as eliminating all of the wrong possibilities and the right solution or the right decision will then become obvious. This is the way I think Coelho is suggesting that we can simplify the way we approach life. Um, sometimes it's worth looking at things from the other direction 
what is wrong as opposed to starting off with well what is right once we've eliminated all of the wrong answers all of the wrong possibilities all of the inappropriate things to do then his point is that the right thing the most appropriate thing will be obvious towards the end of the pilgrimage Coelho writes I was feeling very calm and I was more and more aware of the importance of the road to Santiago in my life and in the question of what I was going to do after the pilgrimage had ended. So what about us? What happens when we reach Santiago and it's time to go home? Do we know what the Camino de Santiago has meant for us and how it's going to change our lives ahead of time? So for some people it's a question of returning home and returning to a life that they already know. But I think for Coelho, the idea that he wants to share with us is that because of the transformational aspects of the Camino that he's experienced, is that his life after the Camino is going to be markedly different. Life always teaches us more than the road to Santiago does. The way I see it, life, when you look at it as a process of living, and the Camino de Santiago have a very special relationship with each other. In some senses, what we learn on the Camino is something that we can apply in life. And what we learn in life is something that we can apply on the Camino de Santiago. So I'm really looking forward to returning to the road to Santiago so that I can learn more about myself, learn more about the Camino de Santiago and then I might be in a better position to see how I can apply what I've learnt on the Camino in my life afterwards. For me then, there's something very attractive in being a perpetual pilgrim. Uh, in some senses, the pilgrimage never ends. And that's something that people often tell you when they reach Santiago, that that's not the end of the pilgrimage, it's simply another beginning. So that brings us to the end of the 10 lessons that we can learn from Paulo Coelho's The Pilgrimage. As you can probably tell, I like the story and I like Coelho's storytelling. It's not a difficult book to read and so I would encourage you to try and get a copy and to go through it um, in your own way. But, and this is um, what I think I can learn from reading the pilgrimage is you need to find ways in which you can move beyond the story itself. I think the story gives us an opportunity to be curious about ourselves and to be curious about the Camino de Santiago and what it might mean in our lives. Reading the book might give us a different perspective on those things and for that reason alone it's probably worth exploring. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Um, thank you for sticking around to the end and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.